Lessons 11 and 12 of The Power of Concentration. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Andrea Fiore, January 10, 2008. The Power of Concentration by Theron Q. Dumont. Lesson 11. Concentrate on Courage. Courage is the backbone of man. The man with courage has persistence. He states what he believes and puts it into execution. The courageous man has confidence. He draws to himself all the moral qualities and mental forces which go to make up a strong man. Whereas the man without courage draws to himself all the qualities of a weak man, vacillation, doubt, hesitancy, and unsteadiness of purpose. You can therefore see the value of concentration on courage. It is a most vital element of success. The lack of courage creates financial as well as mental and moral difficulties. When a new problem comes, instead of looking upon it as something to be achieved, the man or woman without courage looks for reasons why it cannot be done, and failure is naturally the almost inevitable result. This is a subject well worthy of your study. Look upon everything within your power as a possibility instead of as merely a probability, and you will accomplish a great deal more, because by considering a thing as impossible, you immediately draw to yourself all the elements that contribute to failure. Lack of courage destroys your confidence in yourself. It destroys that forceful, resolute attitude so important to success. The man without courage unconsciously draws to himself all that is contemptible, weakening, demoralizing, and destructive. He then blames his luck when he does not secure the things he weakly desires. We must first have the courage to strongly desire something. A desire to be fulfilled must be backed by the strength of all our mental forces. Such a desire has enough commanding force to change all unfavorable conditions. The man with courage commands, whether be on the battlefield or in business life. What is courage? It is the will to do. It takes no more energy to be courageous than to be cowardly. It is a matter of the right training in the right way. Courage concentrates the mental forces on the task at hand. It then directs them thoughtfully, steadily, deliberately, while attracting all the forces of success toward the desired end. Cowardice, on the other hand, dissipates both our mental and moral forces, thereby inviting failure. As we are creatures of habit, we should avoid persons that lack courage. They are easy to discover because of their habits of fear in attacking new problems. The man with courage is never afraid. Start out today with the idea that there is no reason why you should not be courageous. If any fear thoughts come to you, Cast them off as you would the deadly viper. Form the habit of never thinking of anything unfavorable to yourself or anyone else. In dealing with difficulties, new or old, hold ever the thought, I am courageous. Whenever a doubt crosses the threshold of your mind, banish it. Remember, you as a master of your mind control its every thought, and here is a good one to often affirm. I have courage because I desire it because I need it, because I use it, and because I refuse to become such a weakling as a cowardice produces. There is no justification for the loss of courage. The evils by which you will almost certainly be overwhelmed without it are far greater than those which courage will help you to meet and overcome. Right then must be the moralist who says that the only thing to fear is fear. Never let another's opinion affect you. He cannot tell you what you are able to do. He does not know what you can do with your forces. The truth is, you do not know yourself until you have put yourself to the test. Therefore, how can someone else know? Almost all wonderful achievements have been accomplished after it has been thoroughly demonstrated that they were impossibilities. Once we understand the law, all things are possible. If they were impossibilities, we could not conceive them. Just the moment you allow someone to influence you against what you think is right, you lose that confidence in yourself that inspires courage and carries with it all the forces which courage creates. 
Just the moment you begin to swerve in your plan, you begin to carry out another's thought and not your own. You become the directed and not the director. You forsake the courage and resolution of your own mind, and you therefore lack the very forces that you need to sustain and carry out your work. Instead of being self-reliant, you become timid, and this invites failure. When you permit yourself to be influenced from your plan by another, you are unable to judge as you should, because you have allowed another's influence to deprive you of your courage and determination, without absorbing any of his in return. So you are in much the same predicament as you would be in if you turned over all your worldly possessions to another without getting value received. Concentrate on just the opposite of fear, want, poverty, sickness, etc. Never doubt your own ability. You have plenty if you will just use it. A great many men are failures because they doubt their own capacity. Instead of building up strong mental forces which would be of the greatest use to them, their fear thoughts tear them down. Fear paralyzes energy. It keeps us from attracting the forces that go to make up success. Fear is the worst enemy we have. There are few people that really know that they can accomplish much. They desire the full extent of their powers, but alas, it is only occasionally that you find a man that is aware of the great possibilities within him. When you believe with all your mind and heart and soul that you can do something, you thereby develop the courage to steadily and confidently live up to that belief. You have now gone a long way towards accomplishing it. The chances are that there will be obstacles, big and little, in your way, but resolute courage will overcome them and nothing else will. Strong courage eliminates the injurious and opposing forces by summoning their masters, the yet stronger forces that will serve you. Courage is yours for the asking. All you have to do is to believe in it, claim it, and use it. To succeed in business, believe that it will be successful. Assert that it is successful, and work like a beaver to make it so. Difficulties soon melt away before the courageous. One man of courage can fire with his spirit a whole army of men, whether it be military or industrial, because courage, like cowardice, is contagious. The man of courage overcomes the trials and temptations of life. He commands success. He renders sound judgment. He develops personal influence and a forceful character, and often becomes the mentor of the community which he serves. How to Overcome Depression and Melancholia Both of the former are harmful and make you unhappy. These are states that can be quickly overcome through concentrating more closely on the higher self, for when you do, you cut off the connection with the harmful force currents. You can also drive away moods by simply choosing and fully concentrating on an agreeable subject. Through willpower and thought control, we can accomplish anything we want to do. There is wonderful inherent power within us all, and there is never any sufficient cause for fear except ignorance. Every evil is but the product of ignorance, and every one that possesses the power to think has the power to overcome ignorance and evil. The pain that we suffer from doing evil are but the lessons of experience, and the object of the pain is to make us realize our ignorance. When we become depressed, it is evidence that our thought faculties are combining improperly, and thereby attracting the wrong force currents. All that is necessary to do is to exercise the will and concentrate upon happy subjects. I will only think of subjects worthy of my higher self and its powers. Lesson 12. Concentrate on Wealth. It was never intended that man should be poor. When wealth is obtained under the proper conditions, it broadens the life. Everything has its value. Everything has a good use and a bad use. The forces of mind, like wealth, can be directed either for good or evil. A little rest will recreate forces. Too much rest degenerates into laziness and brainless dreamy longings. If you acquire wealth unjustly from others, you are misusing your forces. But if your wealth comes through the right sources, you will be blessed. Through wealth we can do things to uplift ourselves and humanity. Wealth is many persons' goal. 
It therefore stimulates their endeavor. They long for it in order to dress and live in such a way as to attract friends. Without friends, they would not be so particular of their surroundings. The fact is the more attractive we make ourselves and our surroundings, the more inspiring are their influences. It is not conducive to proper thought to be surrounded by conditions that are uncongenial and unpleasant. So the first step toward acquiring wealth is to surround yourself with helpful influences. To claim for yourself an environment of culture, place yourself in it and be molded by its influences. Most great men of all ages have been comparatively rich. They have made or inherited money. Without money they could not have accomplished what they did. The man engaged in physical drudgery is not likely to have the same high ideals as the man that can command comparative leisure. Wealth is usually the fruit of achievement. It is not, however, altogether the result of being industrious. Thousands of persons work hard who never grow wealthy. Others with much less effort acquire wealth. Seeing possibilities is another step toward acquiring wealth. A man may be as industrious as he can possibly be, but if he does not use his mental forces, he will be a laborer to be directed by the man that uses to good advantage his mental forces. No one can become wealthy in an ordinary lifetime by mere savings from earnings. Many scrimp and economize all their lives, but by so doing waste all their vitality and energy. For example, I know a man that used to walk to work. It took him an hour to go and an hour to return. He could have taken a car and gone in 20 minutes. He saved 10 cents a day but wasted an hour and a half. It was not a very profitable investment unless the time spent in physical exercise yielded him large returns in the way of health. The same amount of time spent in concentrated effort to overcome his unfavorable business environment might have firmly planted his feet in the path of prosperity. One of the big mistakes made by many persons of the present generation is that they associate with those who fail to call out or develop the best that is in them. When the social side of life is developed too exclusively, as it often is, and recreation or entertainment becomes the leading motive of a person's life, he acquires habits of extravagance instead of economy, habits of wasting his resources, physical, mental, moral, and spiritual, instead of conserving them. He is, in consequence, lacking in proper motivation. His God-given powers and forces are undeveloped, and he inevitably brings poor judgment to bear upon all the higher relationships of life. While as to his financial fortunes, he is ever the leaner, often a parasite, and always, if opportunity affords, as heavy a consumer as he is a poor producer. It seems a part of the tragedy of life that these persons have to be taught such painful lessons before they can understand the forces and laws that regulate life. Few profit by the mistakes of others. They must experience them for themselves and then apply the knowledge so gained in reconstructing their lives. Any man that has ever amounted to anything has never done a great deal of detail work for long periods at any given time. He needs his time to reflect. He does not do his duties today in the same way as yesterday, but as the result of deliberate and concentrated effort, constantly tries to improve his methods. The other day I attended a lecture on prosperity. I knew the lecturer had been practically broke for ten years. I wanted to hear what he had to say. He spoke very well. He no doubt benefited some of his hearers, but he had not profited by his own teachings. I introduced myself and asked him if he believed in his maxims. He said he did. I asked him if they made him prosperous. He said not exactly. I asked him why. He answered that he thought he was fated not to experience prosperity. In half an hour I showed that man why poverty had always been his companion. He had dressed poorly. He held his lectures in poor surroundings. By his actions and beliefs he attracted poverty. He did not realize that his thoughts and his surroundings exercised an unfavorable influence. I said, Thoughts are moving forces, great powers. Thoughts of wealth attract wealth. Therefore, if you desire wealth, you must attract the forces that will help you to secure it. 
your thoughts attract a similar kind of thoughts. If you hold thoughts of poverty, you attract poverty. If you make up your mind you are going to be wealthy, you will instill this thought into all your mental forces, and you will at the same time use every external condition to help you. Many persons are of the opinion that if you have money, it is easy to make more money. But this is not necessarily true. Ninety percent of the men that start in business fail. Money will not enable one to accumulate much more unless he is trained to seek and use good opportunities for its investment. If he inherits money, the chances are that he will lose it. While if he has made it, he not only knows its value, but has developed the power to use it as well as to make more if he loses it. Business success today depends on foresight, good judgment, grit, firm resolution, and settled purpose. But never forget that thought is as real a force as electricity. Let your thoughts be such that you will send out as good as you receive. If you do not, you are not enriching others, and therefore deserve not to be enriched. The man that tries to get all he can from others for nothing becomes so selfish and mean that he does not even enjoy his own acquisitions. We see examples of this every day. What we take from others will in turn be taken from us. All obligations have to be met fairly and squarely. We cannot reach perfection until we discharge every obligation of our lives. We all realize this, so why not willingly give a fair exchange for all that we receive? Again I repeat that the first as well as the last step in acquiring wealth is to surround yourself with good influences, good thought, good health, good home and business environment, and successful business associates. Cultivate, by every legitimate means, the acquaintance of men of big caliber. Bring your thought vibrations in regard to business into harmony with theirs. This will make your society not only agreeable, but sought after, and when you have formed intimate friendships with clean, reputable men of wealth, entrust to them for your investment, your surplus earnings, however small, until you have developed the initiative and business acumen to successfully manage your own investments. By this time you will, through such associations, have found your place in life, which if you have rightly concentrated upon and used your opportunities, will not be among men of small parts. With a competence secured, you will take pleasure in using a part of it in making the road you traveled in reaching your position easier for those who follow you. There is somewhere in every brain the energy that will get you out of that rut and put you far up on the mountain of success if you can only use the energy. You know that gasoline in the engine of an automobile doesn't move the car until the spark comes to explode the gasoline. So it is with the mind of man. We are not speaking now of men of great genius, but of average, able citizens. Each one of them has in his brain the capacity to climb over the word impossible and get into the successful country beyond. And hope, self-confidence, and the determination to do something supply the spark that makes the energy work. End of Lesson 12